first game at home, you know, the first uh, first game at Armstrong. I haven't there. I know the guys are excited. The field play is great. I want to commend Jeremy and his staff for getting that field ready. Um, we we are kind of the, the, the talk of the Big Ten with regards to um, how we have the field ready and how good it looks. Um, did a great job. And our team's uh, really excited to play, um, you know, on Sunday at Armstrong. Penn State's um, often another good start to not to, to be unexpected. They're, they return a lot of, of their starters from last year. Um, although some of them are young, um, very similar to us, a lot of sophomores that experience as freshmen. And they have a dynamic attack. They got a couple really key players in the back line. And they're, uh, they're tough, well-coached. It's going to be a really, uh, really difficult challenge, but I know our team's looking forward to it, and I know they'll, um, after you know, not having a game midweek, certainly be more than ready and excited to to play on uh, on Sunday. Jeremy Price. Yeah, Todd, you you mentioned not having a game midweek. Uh, obviously, those first three games were just kind of like boom, boom, boom. Um, what were you kind of able to do? What were you able to sort of focus on with having a week now in between games to, to get some practice in? Well, the week was really important to get some health sorted out with, um, you know, everyone was a little bit banged up. This turf is tough on, on some of our older players in particular. It really, with, with tendonitis and just general soreness, um, the amount of training we've done on it, and also this the three games on turf is tough. So um, the, the, the time has been great. We've been able to get Nick additional time, getting him back and healthy. Victor's had a really good week of, of rest and recovery. Um, we've had a couple other guys that are kind of nicked up, nothing that's really kept them out, but it, it just gives them time to heal. So I think the timing of the, of the bye was really advantageous. You know, you want to play after a loss pretty quickly, but that would probably be the only time I'd say no, it's just because of the health. Um, but we're, yeah, we're excited to, to play again, no doubt. Jared? Okay, Evan. Uh, yeah, Coach. Um, obviously, you guys are playing Penn State, who's going to be the toughest challenge you, for you guys yet. Um, they were ranked 20th in the last uh, top-third soccer poll. How are you preparing for that maybe a little higher-level opponent? I tell you, the league's, the league's pretty tight. Um, I think the, the clear indication is that you have an 0-3 Maryland, which is a really good team. <laughs> so I think the first two opponents – are good teams. So uh, yes, Penn State um, has different challenges, but I think the two games have given us a good opportunity to figure some things out. I do remind our, our players and our staff, you know, we would be just finishing our last exhibition game in a traditional season. Three games in is usually our third exhibition. So we don't have a lot of time to make some of these adjustments and changes. So I think where the challenge is, is of like the leash is a little bit shorter, um, and the experimentation can't be as as broad, um, and that's kind of where we're at. So we got to get these partnerships down. We got to get our kind of our rotation in a little bit more firm. This is the stuff you might be doing halfway through the season, but you know we're we're in you know three games. We're there. We're halfway through or more. So that's that's probably the biggest challenge right now. Is like okay, how fast do we look to make changes to see where we are? an experiment, but at the same time, not lose the opportunity for things just to develop because sometimes you just need time for things to, to mature a little bit as a group. So it's a real interesting challenge as a player and also as a coach. Um, but I, I, you know, Penn state getting back to your specific question is certainly one of the top teams. And I, you know, I predicted them to be one of the ones fighting for the title. So I, I do think it's going to be one heck of a, of a game on Sunday. Steve. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Um, so I used to put a lot of players in the pros early over the last couple of years, which is definitely a testament to the program. But that also means that you have to get a lot of freshmen up and going quickly. So can you speak a little bit about the maturation of the freshmen since they arrived on campus and then what your expectations are for them moving forward? And I'm thinking especially of a kid like Joey Mayer, who's got such a pivotal position on the field, and a very vocal one uh, at a very young age. 
Yeah, Joey's playing a, I mean, it's a big role and um, obviously tremendous shoes to jump in for his brother, Jack, who's, you know, you know, I, I, it is a rare talent in a lot of ways. Um, you don't get those every cycle. And, and Joey's been really good. Um, he's playing beyond a freshman. And the fact that he came in mid-year last year was really key. Um, I don't think we would be where we are. And obviously we didn't know this would be happening, but you kind of like Joey got those spring games in the spring of 20. He got to play a lot of scrimmages this fall. Um, so I feel like our developmental players benefited the most from COVID from the only the standpoint of we had a lot of scrimmage opportunities, um, but yet the older players was tough to keep them rolling. And so Joey really benefited from that time. And we got a lot of video work done with him and just reps. Um, it is different when you're playing against, uh, you know, and there's pressure and, and all that. But, yeah, Joey's been great. And, all, you know, all, you got to think of all the freshmen who played last year. We got a lot of young guys that, like, they still don't have a lot of time under their belt. Um, when you compare how old and mature our 18 team was, that 19 team was young. We had, at times, five to six freshmen in the field or more. And now we're expecting them to play like junior seniors at, at times. And we have to kind of scale that back and go, okay, they're still, they're still getting their feet wet. Some of these guys would only be in their first year if they even redshirted. And they didn't because we didn't have the opportunity to do that with the with the with the need. So I'm really happy with our young players overall. Um, I have to be patient with them. And so do our older players at times, if they're not quite um, making decisions that, you know, you'd expect a junior senior to make, but overall, we're really pleased with where they're, do, where, where they are. Will. Uh, Coach, I wanted to go back to your last game against Northwestern, obviously first loss on the season, a shutout loss after scoring three goals in back-to-back -back games. Was there something that stood out to you about Northwestern's uh, defense that, that limited you guys offensively? And are there any similarities between uh, Northwestern's game plan and Penn State's game plan and how they might attack you and how you might attack them? Honestly, we, you know, we, we created um, as many good chances as we've created actually in a couple outings against Northwestern. Um, I look back at the 19 season we, we created more chances in this game last week than we did that year. We won three to one. We had timely goals. We added a couple deflections. Um, that's where the sport can be cruel. I wasn't super happy after the first two games about our offensive effectiveness. Quite honestly, the Northwestern game was much better. Um, we, we created the six to eight good dangerous attacks. Some of them went for, for corner kicks, and we weren't sharp enough in our restarts. That was probably my biggest disappointment from the first half. So many times we got behind them and wide uh, and created some crossing opportunities or some shot opportunities that were blocked. We just didn't, we didn't capitalize on our corner kicks. And we did that in the first two games. We were great on restarts, scored some big goals. And um, so actually I think we went forward um, and that's what's hard because we lost, but I was much, much better with the group after the Northwestern game, although it stung. Um, we play and do more of that we're going to be fine. And then we got to do, we got to shore some things up certainly, but uh, I'm overall pleased with more of our attack after Northwestern game. than I was the first two, although six goals <laughs> is a great score line and, and scoring the winnings hard. And I said, after not playing, um, you know, our a game, I was really happy. The group was able to find timely goals and restart goals. And I said, if we play better and still find those, then we're going to, you know, we're going to have a lot of good results. And I'm still optimistic. That's, that's the case. Evan, you talked about how well the field has been kept up so far, but what does it mean for the players to finally get to go back to Armstrong Stadium as well as uh, get that first game day experience with the Tardy Center? Yeah, they're excited. I mean, the, I think the Tardy Center game day experience will be fun for them. Um, you know, the, the juniors and seniors, it, it, it's hard because, again, they'd be going out to a crazy, uh, boisterous, you know, Hoosier Army and a loud cheering section, the crab band. I mean, we got the best, you know, home field advantage in the big 10 in my opinion and yeah we don't have that but we have the, the a good field a big field uh, of surface that we like playing on it's fast and quick and it's at home and there should be a good confidence level with that um so yeah i think the guys are, are pretty darn excited we just we really wish we could have fans just as all the sports do um, especially in our sport um I'm sure as basketball as well would love to have. It's, uh, it's an advantage to have that, 
that behind you. And we, we don't have that, but we've got to find a way to get results. Jeremy Price. You mentioned obviously not having the time to do a lot of broad experimentation, but are there any, you know, tweaks in terms of lineup or rotation that, that you see after these first three games that you might want to make here? Well, I think, you know, we, we got a couple guys minutes, um, you know, Ward was one that we just gave a little bit to, but it kind of showed that he's got something to his game, even though his short has been doing it in practice. Uh, Brett Beebe has been really good for us in the back. And obviously it gives us a lot of depth moving forward. Um, we expect him to move into midfield um, as we get Nick Sessick back. Nick's a big part of our team. I mean, he's a really talented player. And, you know, I think that will give us more ability to be creative in, in our rotation. Um, but I want to commend, you know, Quentin Helmer did a nice job. I thought Ben did a nice job coming in these last two games and, and providing a spark and, and moving the ball for us. Um, Ryan Wittenbrink's minutes have really increased, and, and he's showing to be pretty darn effective um, on both flanks. Um, you saw flashes of Maloon um, of what he did last year. So, it, it, you know, I think for the new, new players, certainly Joey Mayer has been rock steady in the back. Um, Brett Beebe shows his versatility, and I think it shows where our depth is in midfield wide and also in the middle when we can go to guys kind of based on what the team needs in the game. And I, I like that. And they understand that. We talk about it a lot, like, hey, if it's a certain type of game, we might go to this guy. If it's a, this game, we might go to that guy. Just understand that and, and, uh, and keep performing. So uh, it, it just – I wish we had more games, Jeremy, to, to continue to experiment and let things – happen a little longer we just don't have that um i mean those preseason games are crucial to the start of our season i mean because it does feel real and yet it does get the nerves out i mean there's definitely some nervous energy the first game and a half it really was and now that we got through that then i feel like the evaluation can be a little bit more clear on on what the performance looks like versus kind of anxiety of the first game 